this is our fourth World Congress, and uh, it dates back to 1990 when we held our first one. And at that time, we combined with the uh, traditional Chinese medicine as a whole because very few people know about Qigong. And uh, the, our desire to bring Qigong properly into the Western Hemisphere, into the science field, was kind of our motivation for uh, holding these major conferences. And so it, com it really coincides with the development in 1997 of the American Qigong Association and the World Qigong Federation um, as organizations to try and bring a community together instead of, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, having Qigong masters operate in isolation of one another. Qigong really has a, a greater depth focus than uh, many people understand, and that it indeed is a self-healing tool, and that the masters is a catalyst to help people to basically help heal themselves. A lot of people think that uh, with Qigong, the masters emit Qi and help to heal other people. But in combination with that, it's a cooperative venture and it's a, it's, um, a lifetime kind of commitment to living well. In bringing these people together is really wonderful because we meet some of the most interesting people and, it's, and it is our intention of really reaching for the best uh, in all aspects. And uh, Phil Shinnick came on board in 1997 with our second World Congress and we enjoyed his presentation and his demeanor and his attitudes about Qigong. My first uh, association with the World Qigong Conference, I was invited to deliver a paper on heart disease and I had done a, a major study on heart disease and found out through the terminal phases of a person's life that the practice of acupuncture and meditation, qigong, were, were very effective in alleviating suffering and pain. So these techniques, these alternative medicines, are very, very good to stabilize a person in a very dangerous situation, not only from the disease itself, but when you take Western medicines, uh, when you have these diseases, it creates all sorts of different side effects. Now, Effie Chow has been an old friend of mine for many years. She has a PhD and, and she has a similar background. She's a nurse. She has a, uh, a license in traditional Chinese medicine. She is extremely warm and friendly all the time. And that warmth and friendliness that she uh, uh, exudes towards me is the same way she exudes towards other people. Effie Chow has brought some of the best scientists in the world to this conference, the, the fourth world Qigong conference. The president of the Chinese uh, Qigong Society is here. Uh, one of the premier scientists in Japan is here. Uh, Ken Sansir, who is an eminent scientist from Stanford, is here. He's got many patents on uh, scientific achievements, and he's recognized throughout the United States as one of the great eminent U.S. scientists. Qigong is a special area that promotes health and healing. And it's based on an ancient system goes back thousands of years but not many people know about it and the reason for that is partly because in China Qigong was a secret art it has been only transferred from master to student I'm interested in measuring uh, how we can measure the effect of Qigong on the body through uh, instrumental means. And uh, these instrumental means are based on the, the theory of Chinese medicine. So the results may have a bridge with Western medicine. Beverly Rubrick, who's the, the president of the Institute for Frontier Medicine, is here. She got her PhD at the University of California in physics, and she's got instruments in which she can measure the aura or the energy field around a people. She can actually create a photograph of a person's energy field, and so uh, they can do this before and after Qigong.
tremendous, tremendous uh, benefit to science. Having a prestigious platform to present something that seems so uh, different and foreign to our Western uh, practice uh, is really what we wanted to create. We have uh, uh, government support, um, the health professions, and, and so we have kind of gathered together a whole mixture of various uh, uh, dimensions of people. Rustin Roy is from Penn State and he's a professor of geophysics uh, at Penn State and he's a tremendous reputation. He's also a professor of uh, medicine at Arizona. The state of the present U.S. healthcare system, it is one of the worst in the world among the developed countries. We stand just about the last among the developed countries in all these parameters. Several years ago, uh, Dr. Yan Shin and the Qigong people came on my horizon and Yanshin came to visit me at Penn State. So I became uh, more and more involved and interested in Qigong, in acupuncture. And so it was clear to me that the whole movement was not getting a fair shake. Friends of Health is a 501c3 not-for-profit foundation which is trying to be a support group. We are a support group. We are the servants of all these alternative modalities. We've got two big assets. We really know the scientific world. I bring that connection. we got scientists that nobody can shake a stick at. They're the best top of the line. So in conferences, we bring them there. They're able to talk. They know the field so they can speak with authority. Furthermore, they're allies. Second big asset we bring is good connections to the religious community. All the churches, the Catholics, the Protestants, the Muslims, the Jews, all those communities, the Hindus, the Buddhists, because they have been the mediators of health for 5,000 years. We believe there's an enormous paradigm change taking place. And these many, many wonderful things are not getting a fair shake. So we become their friends and allies. So Friends of Health is a champion of whole person healing. Uh, these techniques can be learned by the normal average person and they can be practiced and they can, they can create a, an enriched life, a cultural life, because not only is it bringing good health, but the process itself is very pleasurable. So I think the next step really is to, is to bring these kinds of medicines into the mainstream American society through social policy through educating the public of the availability of these and also uh, bringing them into the educational institutions, bringing them into young people so that the young people can start doing these things for the rest of their lives. And the good thing about all of these alternatives is most of them are, f are free. At the Congress we have a uh, teenager who presented a workshop on teen qigong and stress. The kids today are under such pressure for high grades and, uh, and competition for, um, for sports and moving young sports into co highly competitive areas. And we know Qigong has improved their running and, and improved their overall stamina. Uh, athletes love to hit a corner jump shot because the, it, it feels good to move in that way. Well, when you learn these different techniques of Qigong or Tai Chi or Gung Fu or, or any of these arts, that the actual wellness techniques are, have a reward in themselves. People come to Qigong classes. Just out of curiosity, what's this Qigong? Two here, the bladder channel, and then one in the back. Sixty percent or more people come there because they have some element that they feel is necessary, need, needs correction. And some people just want to improve their life, reduce stress, uh, improve their health.
What I started doing with Qigong was in 1994 when I discovered that I had cancer. I did a cancer operation. It was in my throat near my tonsil. I had that tumor removed. And then I started looking around for alternative therapy to avoid radiation. In fact, I told my doctor I wasn't going to do it after the operation. He was very disappointed. He said I would die if I didn't do the operation. And generally, we do get a lot of these clients and who, who have never heard of Qigong, they've never heard of Chinese medicine, and they go the uh, Western medicine route. And I'm for Western medicine. I'm not against Western medicine. But there are so many conditions uh, that cannot be helped with Western medicine. So I started doing alternative therapy as a, as a way to get around the radiation therapy. I ran into Dr. Chow, and I thought, well, I'm going to try this, you know. A year later, I went back to the doctor. We had a full MRI test. There was no cancer. He could find no evidence of cancer in my body. And this continued. It's now seven years later. People go and get these different treatments, and they find out that it enriches their lives and, and alleviates their pain and, and creates meaning and, and moves people away from hopelessness. And that's why many people go to complementary and alternative medicine. And of course, Qigong and Chinese medicine is part of that, and this is where our focus is. Qigong has enhanced my life, and the way that it does that is by showing me how to use my own body energy with different practices brings a sense of wholeness into my body. So I, I know where everything is at because, it's, you know, at first it's like shaking like mad. But then when I find different postures to go into while I'm in that meditative state, I begin to really get the whole energy pattern throughout my body. These kinds of treatments have been a part of humankind for thousands of years. So the medical community is calling this uh, non-traditional medicine, but the fact of the matter is, is that most medicine is only 30 or 40 years old in America. I think we have really reached a peak at this Fourth World Congress on Qigong. We have several directions. Uh, one is to promote Qigong in a proper manner, and two is to, um, to work with the uh, government and three is to promote research as well as the, uh, the general aspects of how Qigong will fit into society. And so all this will be culminated into recommendations which we are presenting to Dr. James Gordon at the final plenary session. And Dr. James Gordon is a chair of the White House Commission on Complementary Alternative Medicine Policies. James Gordon is single-handedly with a lot of other people. Effie Chow is, is trying to, to create a report that will go to the president and then to Congress for the Congress to legislate uh, appropriations for research in this area. And, and this shows great, great promise. This looks like a very big area in which there are many scientific opportunities, really interesting science, and much more important, is being kept from the world as a healing modality. In terms of uh, using Qigong for serious illnesses, this has been proven by much research back in China, not in the United States, because there's no funding, and literally very little funding in the United States for Qigong. And right now there's about 3.5 billion dollars that is, is with the NIH for different um, research and, and I think that uh, alternative medicine gets you know maybe two percent of that uh, they don't even get a million dollars. The White House Commission then I think is of course very sympathetic to all these areas but they like to take a very objective view and so taking an objective look and really looking at the pros and cons of uh, complementary alternative medicine I think will make a very strong and proper um, document uh, recommendation. We've had our people testify, bring up different points. For instance, one example is educate the public about health. You know, we teach them science. We should teach them the science of living healthily.